Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to another video. Which episode are we up to? I need to have a look. Okay, so today we are up to episode 8 and we're working on our X and Y hair physics. Let's go! Let's get these jellyfish looks. Woo! Swimming in the sea. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. It is very late for me right now, so <laughs> I don't know where my brain is at right now. But yeah, um, this is basically the look we're going for with our short hair today. Uh, yeah, I do need to touch up a few things, but anyway, that's the short hair, this is the long hair. Woo! This is pretty much what it looks like. I am pretty happy with it, there are some things that I want to change. Surprise, surprise, like these bits down here. So in this video I'm pretty much just going to go over the different methods that we can use for hair rigging. In this video today we'll be discussing skinning, parameters, meshing, rigging method 1, using path deformers directly on the mesh, physics hair X, rigging method 2 using the deform brush tool technique, method 2 physics test, rigging method 3 using the brush selection tool, Method 3 Physics Test Rigging Method 4 Using the Temporary Path Deformers Extended Interpolation Method 4 Physics Test Wheel Rig Hair X There will be a time lapse and physics test for Hair X We'll go over Rigging Hair Y And there will be a time lapse and physics test for Hair Y and finally, there will be a physics menu model showcase, as well as a VTube studio model showcase. So let's get stuck in, let's do it! Hair physics parameters. Okay, so now we are on to hair again. So we're going to do X and Y for hair physics. Um, I follow Tripaku's guide for these parameters, but pretty much we're just going to have this set here for our angle X, so when we look side to side, our hair is going to jiggle. I've just labeled it X1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can do more if your hair is longer. My hair is quite long, so uh, I've done 5. I've just got the ranges of negative 30 to positive 30, default 0. I don't do anything for the ID, and I did that for all of these. And then for my Y, so when you look up and down and it kind of bounces like a jellyfish, that's what these parameters are going to be for. So that is also the ranges of negative 30 for minimum, positive 30 for maximum. And you can also just, you know, right click, replicate, and then just rename it. So yeah, I'll just do five for each and I'll need to add more later. So yeah, that is what we're going to do for parameters. I'm just going to focus on these right here. I probably don't need these ones actually. I'm just going to delete them. Okay, so this is what we're working with today. Skinning. So some people like to use a method called skinning for here. I won't be touching that because uh, every time I've tried to use it, it's turned out badly. Um, but that's just because it uses a lot of rotation deformers but if you do it right it can look really good i'll link a video down below um, if you are curious about that but yeah we won't be touching on that today but there are definitely guides out there if you're curious so i'm just gonna open up all my warps here meshing so in terms of meshes you can either do a manual mesh but i just went auto heavy deformation like this because i'm a bit lazy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is what we're working with today. Working method one, path deformers directly on the mesh. Okay, so for the first method that I'm going to be showing you, we're just going to focus on this strand of hair right here. Just because I have so many warps and so many bits of hair, I'm just going to start off with one, just to show the different ways that you can rig your hair. And this first method is going to be people who are um, either a little bit lazy 
or <laughs> or if they're using the free version maybe you don't want to use any warps so you want to rig directly onto the hair so what we're gonna start off doing is we're gonna grab this path to form edit tool and we're gonna draw a dot up here one here and then at the end of our hair as well and if you want to adjust these you can just drag them like that those points so yeah i like to place one outside of the hair one just inside here and then one at the end now let's just create some keyforms so when you drag it to the right you can hold control and drag it like so and then when you go left you can drag it the opposite way so you've just got like a little bit of movement here and the issue with this technique is that you're not going to get a lot of detail with these movements because you're only going to be able to use two parameters. So let's create three more and for this we're going to add another one of these points. So let's just drag x2 to positive 30 and you can hold control and drag this little bit here and go to negative 30 and do the same we can just test how that looks it goes out a little bit too much then you can go to negative 30 for x1 and go to x2 negative 30 and then do the same for positive 30 x1 you've done that you can just connect these and you can see how it looks and now you've got a little bit of a wiggly movement now you can either rig on each individual keyform like I did or you could just do the main ones and then synthesize the corners but yeah I just like doing it individually because you have more control over it so yeah that is method one physics hair x and you'll be able to go into modeling physics so let's just create our hair X group for our physics and scene blending settings. We're going to call this hair X and go OK. So here we can just input our angle X, Y and Z. So these are our default parameters for live 2D cubism and go OK. Just roughly mess around with these. Let's try for X 90 because we want most of the effectivity to be in angle X because this is hair x but we want a little bit of movement for angle y because the max position can add up to 100 so we'll just put the 10 in angle y i'm just gonna go with 60. you can add your pendulums so for this method we only are using two because we've used x1 and x2 and let's just adjust the reactions you can right click edit all values we're going to type in 0.8 and go okay adjust all the shaking values as well let's try 0.8 as well set the value for all of these duration can be about half that size so let's just adjust this to five go into our output settings and for output this is where we're going to select the two parameters that we just rigged so we used x1 and x2 so we're going to go okay so you'll see here that we have the same amount of pendulums as we do parameters and that's good we want one pendulum for each parameter that we've rigged on increase the scale i'm going to go with 30. it gives it a little bit of extra wiggly movement for this strand here okay so that is the first method that we can use so yeah if you're on the free version you can do that first method to the rest of your hair by rigging directly on those layers rigging method two deform brush tool technique okay so technique number two let's grab our hair strand and create a warp and we're just going to call this x1 so we're just going to start off by creating three keyforms. We want our conversion divisions to be quite high. I'm going to increase it a little bit more actually, so 15 by 15. The more conversion divisions you do, the more lag you might get with your software. So just be aware of that. Let's drag it to positive 30 and we're going to go with like a little wavy effect. I normally use this for when we're rigging in Y, but you can also do it for X. 
um, if you want a little bit more of a bouncy look. We'll see how it looks, but I will probably just end up using this technique for our Y parameters. But yes, yeah, so you can hold B, drag your brush tool, we're using the deform brush tool, and we're going to start off at the top of the hair first. Okay, so I've just hidden my other hair pieces so I can see it a little bit better, and we're going to now start warping it. So we're on positive 30 for X1, and you can just drag your hair, and then we go to negative 30, drag in the opposite direction, and once we've done that, let's just add more Bezier divisions. And select the Bezier edit type to smooth all. And we can just drag this to smooth out our hair. Okay, and do the other side. And once we've got that done, you can now grab your hair again, create the next warp deformer. We're going to call that X2. Make sure it's the child of X1. Go to our parameter X2, create keyforms, drag X1 to positive 30, and now drag X2 to positive 30. Grab our brush tool and we're going to build off of the X1. And then negative 30. And then you can smooth those out. And then we're going to keep doing that until we reach the bottom of our hair strand. So X3. Okay, so I've got one, two, and then we've got three, and I'm going to do the fourth one. Okay, so let's just combine X1 and X2. And you can see it looks pretty wavy. Let's combine it three and four, and this is like the end of our hair. Method two, physics test. So let's just go to our modeling, open physics and blending settings. And now for this, because we have used four parameters, we will need four pendulums. So let's just add those now. Edit all values, 0.8, reaction, 8. Duration, let's try 5. Now for this, for our output, we're going to add our other two parameters that we rigged. So we rigged 3 and 4. We can change the scale to 30. Okay, and now let's see how that looks. <laughs> so you can see it's quite wiggly. It's a little bit janky, but I could probably fix that by adding an extra parameter in. So yeah, that is our second method, and I normally use that for here. Why? Because um, it's a little bit more jellyfishy, a little bit more bouncy, a little wiggle for you. You can adjust these shaking, maybe like 0.75 if it's like a little bit too much, or maybe adjust the scale. That's the second method that you can use. And I've just deleted those warps that we made because I want to work on the next technique. Rigging method three, brush selection tool. So method three, let's just grab our hair strand, create a warp, we're going to call this X1, and you can increase those conversion divisions. Let's go with 10. The previous technique was a bit more wavy. This technique here, technique three, is going to be a bit more like a hair sway. So this is, um, I think that this looks a bit better for angle X. We're going to grab a brush selection tool. We're going to highlight all of these conversion divisions to about here. Let's add some keyforms, drag it to positive 30. And now we can actually rotate this bit of hair. So this brush selection tool allows you to adjust only those conversion divisions which are inside the boundary that you have selected. We've just 
angle that bit of hair. And you can do the same for the opposite side with those points still selected. And you can just drag to adjust that sway. I think I want to drag this a little bit more. So we've got our basic sway done. Let's move this a little bit more as well. And now let's grab the same hair strand, create another warp, make it X2, and then create keyforms on X2. So last time we selected up to this line here, but now we're selecting a little bit less. So we're gonna select up to this line here. Drag X1 to positive 30, drag X2 to positive 30, and just build off of the X1, just for a reference of where it needs to rotate from. Okay, negative 30. Just keep going. So create number three and select. We're going to go up to this part here now. Drag up, create your keyforms, and rotate. I find this method probably one of the most fun methods to do for here. I feel like you have a lot more control over it. I'm just going to keep on going until I've reached the bottom of the hair, selecting a smaller portion each time. I'm actually going to create a new one and call it X6. And the good thing about this technique is that you can literally just keep going until you're satisfied. The only issue is, is that you're using so many warps. <laughs> So it was probably not the best option if we're using the free version. Okay, so we have finished making the keyforms for it. Let's just combine these. So you can see this is the first part, the big chunk. This is the second chunk. This is the last chunk. So it's a little bit janky at the moment, but we can refine it. Method 3 physics test. Let's go into modeling and see how it all looks. So let's add those extra parameters that we rigged on. So x5 and x6 and adjust the scale. We'll try 28. And because we've added extra parameters now, we're going to need to add extra pendulums. So let's add. So this is what it looks like. It's bouncy. That bottom bit is going insane. <laughs> I might adjust that down actually. Maybe 20. That looks a bit better. So yeah, that is our third technique. Oh, this one is quite wiggly. I like it. <laughs> It's obviously like a little bit janky like on the end here, but I think it looks cute. It's got like a little bit of spring to it. Okay, so let's move on to our fourth method now. Rigging method for temporary path deformers. Okay, so I've just grabbed my next hair strand. I've hidden the previous one that we just rigged because I like how that is looking right now. And we're going to create a warp deformer, X1. Add the keyforms. For this method, our fourth method, we're going to go to modeling. We're going to be using a temporary deform tool and it's going to be temporary path deformation. But because we're going to be using it so much, we're going to actually key bind this. So let's go to file, settings, keyboard shortcuts, we're going to go to modeling and drag down until you find it. It's going to be this one, temporary path deformation. So I'm doing control and my numpad one and then go okay. And now when you're using the pointer tool, go control one and you can create your temporary path deformation. And what this allows you to do is to use a path deformer, but you can use it temporarily. So that means that you won't need to select the hair strand itself, the item. It also means that you can select on your warp deformer you can add a deform path to your warp deformer. So this means that on each keyform, you can set a new path. So if I set a path on the middle keyform, so at zero, and I wanted to use it, 
and then I dragged it to positive 30. I will not be able to use that same path. I would need to create a different one. So you would need to go control one again and create a new path and try and mimic the previous one that you've made. Let's use that tool now. Okay, so we've selected on positive 30 and let's go control one. We're gonna put the first dot outside of our warp. The next dot is gonna be here where we want our hair to start bending from. For a general edit, I'm gonna place the next dot down here so that it generally follows the line of the hair. You can also hold control and adjust it. And now, because we're on positive 30, we can just hold left click and drag, go to negative 30, control one again, and you can just drag it now. I want quite a bit of swing, make sure it doesn't get stretched too much. I think I might actually increase the conversion divisions just to make it a bit more smoother. That is the general edit. And then go OK. And then just like our previous one, we're going to create another warp for X2. Create your keyforms. Control 1. So I'm going to create a point here, 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 and here. So 1, 2. And now let's get the other side. And create a new path. And now let's create X3. Add your keyforms. of our hair. So one, two, three, and then one, two, and then let's do our fourth one. And jiggle that a little bit at the end. So you can combine those and see what it looks like. I think this probably looks the smoothest out of all techniques. That's why I like using it. Extended interpolation. You can also go here, select all, and then go here and select extended interpolation. Uh, let's go ellipse. Is it ellipsy? I don't know. I think it's ellipse. <laughs> Let's go four because our hair is a little bit longer. So I just wanted to give my input on extended interpolation. Pretty much interpolation is the movement that is calculated in between your keyforms. So we keyformed negative 30, 0 and positive 30 on our parameter. Without extending the interpolation, Live2D calculates the movement as a linear path between keyforms. And consequently, this is where we can sometimes see an expression of shrinkage or a skewing of our objects between keyforms. And we don't want this, we want it to be a smooth manipulation. So so normally the line of path between keyforms is linear, but by extending interpolation, so extending the calculation of the object's movement between the keyforms you've created, between the timing at which the parameter is manipulated, the movement will be able to be smoothed into a curved trajectory. So we are essentially extending the manipulation of our warp deformer, or art mesh, on our parameter so it is a gradual and curved change. So we are using ellipse interpolation, or ellipse interpolation, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but this is one of the calculation methods that Live2D offers and the characteristics of this method are that you can automatically generate however many points you want but you can go up to something crazy like 20 and this creates more manipulation points on the line of path between keyforms. This pretty much replaces the linear interpolation that we started with so between our negative 30 0 and positive 30 keyforms and replaces it with a curved one so a circular orbit. The scale and number of key points can be adjusted. Subsequently the movement of your your warp deformer or art mesh along the line of path 
path on your parameter is changed depending on how many points you key. So the number of points you key is reflected in the fluidity of movement you want to see between your keyforms. So basically extended interpolation performs interpolation calculation at the timing when the parameters are manipulated. So you're generating keys on an orbit and it emulates linear interpolation at runtime. So um, the more you extend this interpolation, so the more keys or points you create, the smoother the trajectory, I can't say that word, <laughs> but the smoother the trajectory is going to be. But the drawing load in the editor also becomes heavier, um, especially when you're doing this to multiple parameters. So you do need to be cautious of this. This is just um, one thing to keep in mind. Uh, so because it functions curvilinearly um, and interpolates the linear interpolation of a parameter, it does automatically generate a specified number of keyforms and keyforms for extended interpolation between the keyforms. So you're creating a lot of points between your keyforms. You're extending that movement, the interpolation. So extending this does also proportionately extend the size of your model. Your model size increases because the keyforms are added by extended interpolation. And on top of this, if you extend it in multiple keyforms, they are also multiplied with each other. So in terms of your model size, your SDK file, extended interpolation has little effect on performance during execution, but there is a slowdown when loading the model. Method for a physics test. Let's just see what it looks like in our modeling settings. Okay, so let's test this out. I'm going to adjust all these to 0.8 and you can see that it's just a bit smoother with its angle. It looks a little bit stiff up here so I can go back in and edit that but the bottom of it looks nice and springy. It looks a little bit more fluid as well. So yeah, those are the different methods. So you can see that different rigging styles give you different results. Like our third method where we use the brush selection tool. It gives you a little bit more of a subtle wiggle. Whereas our last method we just did, the strand here, is definitely more intense. <laughs> I quite like the more intense look um, because VTube Studio tends to downplay uh, the extremity of these rigs so it won't actually be this wiggly in VTube Studio. And because each rigging style looks that different, um, you can actually create different groups for different hair chunks. Like if you had a fringe that used the first method like this where it's like a little bit more subtle um, and the longer bits of hair down here if you used the fourth technique that we did just before then that gives you more control over these pendulums and also the output settings of your parameters so yeah that's just something to keep in mind i am now going to go in and rig all the other strands of here um, I'm probably going to redo that first strand so that it matches this one here. That is what we're working with. Here X time lapse. Okay, I'm just going to do a speed run of this now. <laughs> Here X physics test. Okay, so now we have got our X physics done. 
it's still a little bit janky i also did the short hair toggle as well so that's what that looks like it's just a little bit of sway rigging hair away now that we have got that done we're gonna start working on our hair angle away so we're going to use these parameters for our Y and we're going to use that wavy jellyfish technique that I showed earlier. So I'm going to start off with this hair strand and let's create a warp deformer for Y1. Make sure that it's the child object of these X deformers and now when we go positive 30 this is going to be what our hair looks like when we're looking down and then when we go negative 30 this is what our hair is going to look like when we're looking up. And if this looks weird on your particular model, you can invert these after you've rigged it. Okay, so increase the Gaussian division numbers. Uh, let's start off with positive 30. We'll grab our deform brush tool. So when you're looking down positive 30, your hair is going to turn into like a, a rubbish bag that's flying in the wind. <laughs> being full of air or like a, a parachute or a jellyfish in the water it's gonna have this like bleh, it's gonna go up here and then when you look down it's gonna go down here <laughs> obviously not to that extreme but yeah that's the kind of whip whip look we're going for the whip 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 jellyfish <laughs> Okay, so positive 30, we're looking down, but our hair is puffing up. And then negative 30, our hair is going to be going the opposite way. So it's going to move away from the face and then towards the face. I like to get the selection tool, change this to smooth all, and just move around these Bezier divisions. Okay, it looks a little bit strange now, but it will look a bit better when it all comes together. And then after we've done that, let's select our hair again and create a Y2. Get those keyforms, use Y1 as a guide. And then do the opposite. the bottom of the hair. And we're actually going to create that temporary deformer part. And this is so we can actually just flick the bottom of our hair. Hair Y physics test. Let's just chuck it into our modeling physics settings and for this one let's add we're gonna go with hair y for adding our group and we're gonna just chuck in angle y so our default input for live 2d let's just set effectivity to 100 and let's make sure we add our pendulums so we're gonna need five i'm just gonna adjust some of these Let's go to output settings and add in all of our rigged parameters. So we've got Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 and Y5. We've added them, adjust our scale, we'll just try 30. And you can see there's this like wiggly worm jellyfish look. Okay, so I've just done it for that piece of hair. We got a little slithery snake going on. Eek. My mouse is broken. Ah. Okay, there. <laughs> slithery snake. Uh, I can zoom in here. Okay, I'll just use these. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I think that will do for now. I'll probably go in and make it a little bit more fluid. Um, but yeah, so I've done this piece. I'm going to go through and do all my other hair pieces now. Hair wide time lapse.
Okay, so I've just finished rigging all of those Y parameters for each hair strand. So we have got Y1 and then Y2, Y3, Y4, and then Y5. And I know this looks very crazy, <laughs> but I promise it will look okay in the physics settings. We've done this to get the whole jellyfish look. And then for negative 30 for our Y parameters, we've got Y1, Y2, and then y4 and then y5 so that is what it looks like for our negative 30 and we also did all of these parameters while keeping in mind our short hair so we did it for the short and long hair like that with the short hair physics menu model showcase and if we go into our physics settings our y looks like this for our short hair, it looks like this. So yeah, I might just edit that a little bit more, but that looks pretty good to me. I think the short hair definitely looks cuter, but yeah, Ew, jellyfish, jellyfish. Yeah, so you can also test it out in VTube Studio, so remember to save and export out your settings. VTube Studio Model Showcase. And this is what the hair looks like. With our physics. Excuse my... <laughs> My mouth at the moment. My lighting is bad in my room, <laughs> so um, it thinks that I'm frowning when I'm looking up. <laughs> Angry. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it looks like. I look like a crazy person right now. I'm head banging. And then we have the short hair toggle. Whip. <laughs> so yeah. There are some little bits that I want to change. But yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with it for now. I did rig in the ends of the bows and also the love heart, the ahogi, I think it's called. I could say it, I could be saying it wrong, but yeah. <laughs> I rigged that in too. Yeah. I also need to do my piercings so that I have, so they have the X and Y physics as well. Like with the little B, you could probably wiggle a bit more. And maybe the top of the bows could as well. But yeah, that's a good start, I think. Let's go back into live 2D. Summary and outro. Okay, so I think that's about it for today's video. We've got our X and our Y physics. I will be touching up some things, like I can see a bit of hair here that I could make a little bit better. little bits of skin behind this here it looks a little bit janky in this area but I'm, I'm just gonna stop <laughs> I'm just gonna stop picking at it otherwise I will never finish this video so and I do want to show you just a basic video of the different types of hair physics that you can do so I hope that this was helpful. Uh, feel free to join our Discord. I do have a live 2D channel in our Discord server um, and you can feel free to pop any advice or questions in there um, or if you want 
certain videos made i could try and make them i just wanted to say i appreciate you guys so much thank you so much for watching and please comment down below if you have any questions any comments uh any any tips because i would love to learn more these videos are really helping ingrain the live 2d tools in my brain i want that big wrinkly live 2d brain <laughs> but you gotta practice you gotta start you gotta just do it. I think it's a good idea to just practice live 2D, just dive straight in, you can do it. I believe in you, and the more you practice, the better you'll get. Um, I'm still really scuffed at it, but this is really helping me, so yeah, makes me really happy just slowly progressing and also helping others as well. We've all gotta start somewhere. Our next video will be on our ear rigging and physics, so our little fluffy ears. We're gonna make them look really good. We're gonna do an idle animation. We're gonna rig it in with our eyebrows so they're very expressive. We're gonna make them very floofy, very dynamic. <laughs> so make sure to catch that one. Um, I will probably just keep working on this behind the scenes, make it a little bit better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if it looks slightly different uh, in our next video, that will be why but I'll pretty much just Go through and fix all these little things up. Make it a little bit better. As always, make sure you grab some food and some water. Take care of yourself. Put on some comfy clothes. And good luck with your rigging. I will see you in the next video. Bye!